This video is made available by the Allegheny College Computer Science Department under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike version 3.0 license. We only have a few more pieces to go, but it turns out they have a lot of legs on them. This is the socket that we're going to put the processor in. It has a small nibble and it, there's a small nibble on the board. Take note and line them up correctly. There's only two ways it can go in, so, so get it right. It's, it's not too hard. There we go. All the legs are in. Then we lay the board down and solder it much like any other component. I recommend soldering one corner first and then the opposite corner, as that will hold the piece in place while you are soldering the rest of the legs. Notice, light touch, a little bit of solder, and you're done. Then do it for the remaining 26 pins. And there you go. The socket is now attached to the board and ready for a processor. Next, we're going to start soldering in the legs, or as we prefer, the male headers. So go ahead and cut all of the lengths that you need. Try and be careful. We don't want to waste too many of these. And I'm going to start by showing you just one of them. We need a length. Oh, what it was it? Is it a length of five? That's what it looks like. And you'll want to follow what I write, not what I say. There we go. And so we're going, the reason we have to be careful here is we don't want to fill in the holes for another component, which is the crystal oscillator. So your partner can help hold this, and we go in and we just tack the header in. It's like soldering any of the other components, except now we're soldering on the top of the board as opposed to the bottom. The other side is very easy. We can take a full length of headers, slot them in, and go to town. Easy peasy. In fact, I'm going to make this go really fast. Watch this. This is how fast I solder. I'm going to make sound effects too. It's going to be good. Ready? That's the best part of the video. Live it up. Once we're done soldering in the headers, we're pretty much good to go. This is almost done. But we still need the crystal oscillator. It doesn't matter which way it goes in the board. So we slot it in, flip it over, and solder the three legs just like any other component. You can trim them back if you want, but be gentle. That's all. The diode is a part that you have to put in the correct way. Now you might start by bending the legs the way I have. And what you want to do is make sure that the small stripe is against the board and specifically oriented the way I've pictured here. Solder it, trim the legs, and when you're done, it should look just like that. The power jack, this is an important component, but it's big, it only goes in one way, and you can use a fair bit of solder on this one. The solder is both making an electrical connection in this case and holding the jack in place. Next, our programming header. This is how we get code onto the sensor. It's like any other component, and I found that propping it up on my pliers made things a little easier. Done and done.
The last thing we need to do is insert the processor. This is a delicate job. You have to start by gently bending the legs in so that they're square. That is, they're splayed out just a little bit too far by the way that it comes from the factory. So we need to gently bend those pens in just a little bit. Gentle, gentle, gentle. And then you're going to slot it in and note it has a little nub. If you put the processor in the wrong way, bad things will happen. So gently work it in. I've sped it up a great deal and it should eventually snap into place. And that's it. You have successfully built a small computer that will sit at the heart of your environmental sensor. Ba-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-